Well, greetings and praise the Lord. This is Pastor Brady, and we can rejoice. God has blessed us that we're able to come to the very last life impact for the year of 2022. And we can rejoice because God has been good to us. I'm grateful, hallelujah, for all the many blessings that the Lord has bestowed upon me, my family, and especially my new Bethel church family. He's been with us, and we do not take that for granted. And I'm grateful for all of what the Lord has done. I'm sure you're rejoicing with me, hallelujah, that we've come now to the conclusion of another year, anticipating what is getting ready to happen. But I want to welcome you to the New Bethel Church, our Life Impact Bible Study, and I'm Pastor Brady. So why don't you now just call someone, let them know that we're now on, and I'm sure that they will be blessed by today's presentation. I want to first thank all of our staff pastors, each one of them for the month of December taught a life impact Bible study. We were so blessed. In addition, as you know, they also preached one Sunday in the month of December as well. And I'm just grateful. They have been supportive. And in this entire year, we've been blessed because of their ministry to New Bethel. Did not we have a wonderful Christmas production? Oh, I'm telling you, my heart was thrilled when I saw the children, when I heard the worship, and I'm sure that you were blessed by the word, glory to God, hallelujah, that the light of life has come. We no longer have to be in darkness, but we can continue to walk and follow the light which is Jesus Christ. Again, I want to thank the entire staff, the production team, especially for putting that together. And we are blessed by that presentation. Now, before I get into the lesson, I do want us to be praying. First of all, let's pray for those in Buffalo, New York and Western New York who were hit by that a uh, blizzard that has uh, reached new records. Oh, my heart was just touched to hear individuals who died in their car during the storm because they couldn't get to their homes. They couldn't find a place of safety. And they're still even now finding bodies, no doubt frozen to death in their cars. What a sad state. So let us remember them and their families. Uh, also, of course, we want to remember uh, those on the southern border of the United States, many immigrants who are trying to get in to find a better way of life. Uh, there, there needs to be uh, legislation reform for immigration. But at the various cities in our southern part of the United States, they're being overrun. And many of them are sleeping outdoors because there's no place to contain or hold them. So let's remember that. And, and lastly, of course, you know, many are being stranded as a result of the airlines who were unable to uh, work out through the storm that we had Christmas weekend, especially Southwest Airlines. Thousands and thousands of flights have been canceled, which have left people living uh, practically in the airport for the last few days. Even Alexis was affected with her flight getting home, but we're praying that she will get there safely. We thank God where she's at. She is safe. So we want to remember all of our families and everyone who is in that specific condition. 
And uh, here at home, we want to pray for Sister Nettie Campbell. Uh, she's not doing very well. And we know that she's a fighter, uh, but she's in God's hands. And we're praying for divine intervention. So let's remember her and the families that continue to support and others who are ill and sick. We know that God is still able. So again, let someone know that we're on with our Life Impact Bible Study. And I want to begin today with our last lesson, hallelujah, here for this year of 2022. So let's start now with this, of course, being the year to celebrate. And I'm telling you, we've had a lot to celebrate as God did some specific, miraculous, and personal things for each one of us. So we will rejoice evermore. And I pray that you've been blessed. And I want to start by letting you know this is the final affirmation for this year. Week 52, Jesus was born that I may live. Some of you may remember at the beginning of the year, we gave these out to all of the members of the church for them to write the affirmations weekly and then share them and speak it out in the atmosphere. This is mine. I brought it from home. I diligently, every week, wrote the new week's affirmation, and I had it there in my bedroom, and I would, I would, I would see it every morning, speak it out, and this is year 52. I'm sure some of you may still even have yours. Some got started, but maybe they fell off along the way, but these affirmations, the entire list will be available this coming Sunday. So when you come to church, those that are interested, we've prepared a copy that you can see each week's affirmation with the scripture, and you can review it uh, or even go next year and uh, this, the, the, uh, you know make your affirmation each week again in 2023. But I did want you to be aware that that is available. Let me get started with the scripture that I'm using for today. And the scripture, I'm using the Living Bible version from what we normally would use from the King James. I'm sure you're more familiar, but the Living Bible version says this. No, dear brothers, I am still not all I should be but I am bringing all my energies to bear on this one thing. Look, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize. That's what I want to put emphasis on. Forgetting the past and looking forward. This time of the year, the last week, is normally for me a time that I spend in the dis uh, personally that I'm going to discuss with you, reflection and expectation. That's our lesson today, reflection and expectation. Reflecting on 2022, but expecting 2023. This is always, for me, a somber week, the week uh, after Christmas and the week before the new year. And while people, of course, are celebrating, partying, rejoicing, and yes, I certainly am doing that, it also is, for me, what we often would say, a sila moment, a time to pause, a time to consider. And I'm entitling this lesson, Reflection and Expectation. That's what I've been doing this entire week. And I hope that you too will do the same. Uh, God has been good to us. And we have to look back over this year 
and recognize what the Lord has done. That's why when we talk about reflection, reflection is really meditation. Another word, meditation. Reflection is a thought, idea, or opinion that is formed or remark made as a result of meditation. It's the consideration of some subject matter, idea, or purpose. So when we reflect back on 2022, through our meditation, we give consideration. Hallelujah. Because we cannot forget, we cannot afford to forget what the Lord has done for us. See, the adversary is so skillful and very wise. That's why uh, he used the, the, the serpent, subtle, to, to cause us to forget. Again, that's the reason why, if you remember, I had these cards made specifically so that you can write what you celebrate. Hallelujah. Woo. What you celebrate that the Lord did for you in 2022. This causes us not to forget. When we look through the scripture, we find instance after instance where God would deliver the people of God, but they would forget. They would forget his laws. They would forget what was done. They forget how he blessed them. They forget the miracles. And we see time and time again that they then sought other gods. They wanted to be like the other nations. They lost their spirit or sense of sanctification. And that's what I don't want us to do here at New Bethel. Because the enemy will bring so much to you now that you lose the, the sense of what God did for us the entire year. And for me, I know this has been, I've been under a spiritual attack with things that have come up and, and it's caught uh, the adversary is causing me or trying to cause me to become uh, uh, dis, uh, discouraged and distracted from my purpose and my position of leadership. The enemy is so skillful. And that's, again, the reason why I wanted you to write down so you won't forget, because let's say that you were on one of the flights that was uh, canceled and you had to end up being in the airport or your schedule was, was not as you desired. You'll leave this year thinking this is the worst year of my life and it's only been a couple days that you've had this issue that made it uncomfortable but the adversary will cause you to feel as if the entire year has been one of the worst years of your life when in fact you were blessed to celebrate so many great things that God did for us. That's why for me, and I pray for you, even in the midst of the attack of the enemy, or regardless of what you're going through, this week, spend time meditating, reflecting, looking back over the blessings of God. Ooh, here at New Bethel, saints, we've been blessed. We have been blessed. The word, the spirit, the presentation, the ministry that we've done both in the church, out of the church, how God has kept us, healed us, delivered us, uh, brought us out. Glory to God. We got to go out with a praise on our lips, not thinking that this is the worst year or your, your, your desires were not met. No, 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 no. Reflect. Reflect. 
listen, listen. And if you're able to reflect, that means you're still alive. Hallelujah. Think we could have been in that situation where we were stranded in a car during a blizzard. We could have been on a border crossing, staying out in the elements, trying to get a better life. We could be in so many situations such as the war that is happening in Ukraine or the, the COVID issues that they're having in China. Don't let the devil cause you to forget what he's done for you and what he's done for us. Look at the scripture. The scripture in Psalm 62 and 5 says, I remember the days of old. I meditate or I reflect on all your works. I muse on the work of your hand. Look, look, you have to remember the days of old. That's meditation. That's reflecting on all the works of God. I'm telling you, saints, God was with us. Hallelujah. He was with our homes. He was with our families. Even those that are out of the ark of safety, consider God still kept them alive, still has blessed them. When we look back and see the things that the Lord allowed us to participate in helping others, I'm telling you, saints, we've been blessed. So spend time this week. I know some are going to go back uh, because you were upset with a gift that you had or wasn't the one you wanted and you're going to take it back and you've got gift cards now and you can't wait to spend them. But in the midst of all of that, oh, remember how God has been with us. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm saints, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm full and I'm trying to contain myself because when you just think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for us, we don't need a, an organ. We don't need drums. We don't need uh, those that are playing on in the band. Honey, there'll come a hallelujah praise from the depths of our soul because we can reflect and consider the works of God's hands. And look at it. The scripture says in Psalms, my mouth shall speak wisdom and the meditation of my heart shall give what? Understanding. There it is. You see, your meditation will then put into perspective. It will give you understanding. It will not allow the adversary to gain the advantage by making you forget. Hallelujah. But your meditation will, uh, will, will bring to you an understanding. Hey, wait a minute, Glenn. God has been good to you. I know that things might not be as you want them right now, or you feel as if you've been let down or you're under attack, but consider for 365 days, for 52 weeks, we put in the atmosphere uh, an affirmation, hallelujah, that would counteract the works of the adversary. Uh, and that's why we can declare, hallelujah, Jesus was born that I may live. I don't have to stay in darkness. I can continue to follow him, the light of life. Hallelujah. And listen, saints, listen, listen. You should be grateful just for the desire to be saved. How many have stopped walking in this holiness way? How many became so discouraged? How many were tricked by the enemy to turn back on God? or to no longer put their full effort in living a holy, sanctified life. But I praise God 
in the morning when I wake up that I still have a desire to be saved. Yes, I'm telling you that Satan still will fight your mind. He'll bring you, trying to bring your minds into subjection. He'll cause you to think, is this really real? Is this really what you should be doing? But oh, I praise God that I'm over to overcome and, and just have a desire. God, you've been so good. Hallelujah. You've blessed me. And for that, I give you the praise. Woo! And while we are reflecting on the past, at the same time, I'm now looking with expectation for the next year. And with expectation, just like meditation goes with reflection, hope is expectation. Hallelujah. Expectation is a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. Expectation is the feeling, the feeling, oh, I can't emphasize that, the feeling that good things are going to happen in the future. You see, you begin to be overwhelmed with a feeling, and that's why we sing that song, everything is going to be all right, <laughs> regardless of what the plight is, regardless of the situation, there's a hope that is building within you. Glory to God and expectation. Remember, hope is what fuels our faith. I've shared it on many occasions. Faith is the vehicle to get us from point A to point B, but we need hope to fuel our faith. Our car cannot run unless it's being fueled with fossil fuels like gas or electric. Uh, but, but I'm telling you, we need that to move. That's what expectation is. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you at the end of this year, oh God, I'm saying, fill me up, Lord. Fill up my tank with expectation. Fill up my tank with hope. Woo, glory to God. You see, when the weather gets low like this, uh, what the, the you know the very rigid frigid temperatures that we've had below uh, uh, the freezing point zero and below zero, we'll send a text out to the family members. Make sure you fill up your gas tanks because if you don't, there's a the, there's the possibility that it can freeze. And it'll mess up your ability to drive your car. So make sure you might even have a half a tank. No, no, no. Go and fill it up. Hallelujah. Because you'll need to have every ounce, every space of your tank filled with fuel to keep you glory to God during these frigid times. That's what hope is. We fill up our tanks to where it's Oh, glory to God. Mm, that's why you see pipes that burst. So we make sure you put heat uh, close to the walls where those pipes are up against the exterior of the building. We don't want them to burst. We don't want them to break. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, as we go into 2023, and that's why, oh, that's why you better be here on Sunday. Uh, we're getting ready to Fill up our tanks. Glory to God. God is getting ready to do something. I can't wait to share with you what the Lord has put in my spirit as we begin to celebrate the church's 75th anniversary. I believe that we're turning the corner. Uh, uh, and it's the feeling. Look, look at the definition again. The feeling that good things are going to happen in the future. That's expectation. When you look at the scripture, uh, the psalmist said in the uh, uh, Psalms, my soul waits silently for God alone, for my expectation is what? From him. Ooh, God will give you an expectation. He'll give you a hope. Something's getting ready to happen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You should be right now in the midst of writing. What is the Lord putting in your spirit? Where does he want you to go? What's getting ready to happen? 
And this is so unique. We can't forget this scripture in Proverbs. The proverb writer was so wise. He says, when a wicked man dies, his expectation will what? Perish. And the hope of the unjust perishes. You see, as long as you have life, glory to God, you've got hope. Mm. When you die, your hope perishes. See, a wicked man, uh, those that are only concerned about the natural, the, 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 the money that they can have, the possessions that they have, when the wicked man who tries in any way to get ahead, look at this congressman who lied on his resume. It was no embellishment. This man lied, said he went to this school, worked at this place, did that, and got elected, hallelujah, because he has this, this desire to get ahead. But I'm telling you, when he dies, his expectation will perish, hallelujah. But thanks woo, for the saints of God, we've got a hope beyond the grave, hallelujah. That was the message that I was going to preach at uh, Deacon Broderick Crawford's until the Lord changed it. We, the people of God, we've got a hope beyond the grave that even if we die naturally, hallelujah, it's not the end. For a wicked man, their expectation, their hope perishes when they die, but not we, the people of God. I'm telling you, saints, we need to look at this week. This is a week for us for reflection and expectation. Spend time Woo. until a few more days and we enter into 2023. Spend time reflecting. God's been good. And at the same time, Feel the move of God for what's getting ready to happen in 2023. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, saints, I am so blessed. I am so excited. I am so grateful for what the Lord is doing. Hallelujah. That's why I love writing. That's why I want you to continue to, to write. I want you to keep your journals. That, that's a good project for you in 2023. Get your personal journal. Journalize. That way you're able to reflect back. I'm thinking about something in the future that I want to do, even me personally, for the future. You've got to write. You've got to make sure that you do not allow the enemy to cause you to forget. So reflect. Make your plans, your goals for 2023. I'm telling you, next year, I, I can't even put it into words what I feel the Lord is going to do for us. Hallelujah. He's been so good, and I'm just grateful for his blessings. Now, I want to conclude with this prayer, and then I've got some very important things that I want to share with you. But come on, let's 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 look to the Lord. Oh Father, our God, our life, our sustainer our provider. We worship you. We recognize you as our God, our Savior, you are Lord, and Jesus is your name. There's none like you. And Father, we're ever so appreciative of how you kept us, our homes, our families, watched over us as we traveled, when we were sick, you healed our bodies. When we were down, you raised us up. When we were out, you put us back in. Oh, God, there's none like you. And I pray that you allow 
the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. Lord, take us to a new place and a new level. And we just say, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you for everything you've done for us. And as a church and as a body and as a family, God, we couldn't do it without you. Now, as we prepare to go into this new year, we ask for your anointing. We ask for your favor. We know time is, is coming together. There's a rendezvous that is happening. It's in the heavenlies. It's beyond us. And we just want to be in our right place. Save us, God, lest we perish. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, there's a number of things I want to share with you. First of all, hallelujah. Woo, help me, Holy Ghost. This Saturday, December 31st, we're not having a service, but those who want to come and be in prayer as we pray the old year out and the new year in, we are going to open the sanctuary. I will be here. Let us gather at 1130. Come. You don't have to be dressed in a certain way. We're just going to be a time of prayer. There's not going to be a service. There's not going to be a message necessarily unless the Lord gives other instruction. We might have some worship. But we want to pray that we want to go to that that old landmark. <laughs> uh, we want to go back to what we grew up with. Praying the old year out and praying the new year. And we're not calling it watch night. Uh, as we've learned through understanding that was related to slaves who were looking for uh, the time uh, when they would be uh, free through the Emancipation Proclamation going into effect uh, on the new year. This is a time that we're just going to pray. Hallelujah. You know, I'm a lover of prayer. And again, I'm grateful for our prayer intercessors, those who dedicated their lives. Uh, El, Sister Frida uh, Relaford and her team who have got several prayers constantly. Hallelujah. It's our hope. It's our expectation. So again, come um, and we're going to be here 11 30, 12 15. We should be on our way home. Hallelujah. We're just going to pray the old year out to pray the new year in. And the reason is, I want everyone to be here for the launch of 2023. I don't think it's happenstance or coincidence that the first day of this new year comes on a Sunday. So we're going to have a New Year's service right here in person in the sanctuary. <laughs> Excuse me. And I need you to be here. Bring your family, your friends. We want to fill the sanctuary. We're not even going to have <clears throat> a children's church ministry because I even want the children to be a part of this service. It is when the Lord is going to have me launch the theme of the church for this new year. And in addition, as I've been sharing, we're going to be giving or serving Holy Communion. Now, we're not going to do like we normally do and wait to the end of the service. No, it's going to be at the beginning. I would... Uh, admonish you, come and be in the sanctuary by 1040, I'm sorry, by 945. Services will start exactly at 10, and the communion is in the first part of the service. So if you arrive like 
many have done in the past, at 1015, you will have missed the communion. I was so impressed of God to have communion because we've got to launch into this new year, hallelujah, with the blood of Jesus. Uh, again, we need to be protected from the attack of the enemy. And that's why we must have the body, the blood. We must have his protection, his favor. We must be launched spiritually. So it is vitally important that you receive Holy Communion. And it's then after I will begin to share the theme and what we're doing for this new year. So please make every effort to be here because also this is the 75th church anniversary, our Diamond Jubilee. That's what we're calling it. July 4th is the actual anniversary date. However, there are going to be a number of things that we will share uh, that we will be doing throughout the year in celebration of this event. Uh, again, that's the reason why we're asking individuals on Sunday to wear white, uh, winter white, and again, if you don't have white, it's going to be white with black trim. If you don't have it, just wear black then, white, black, or whatever. We want you to come. But that's the reason why, because for the Diamond Jubilee this year, our flower is going to be a white rose and also the orchid, a white rose and orchid. Woo! Glory to God. And our color is going to be a diamond white with specific trim. We'll, we'll share more about it. But I just want you to be aware of that. And that's on this year. A number of things we'll be, we'll be doing. And I will be discussing that more uh, when we have our church, our, our church business day. Uh, and that's going to be coming up on a Saturday. Uh, the towards the end of January, but I'll be sharing more with you on that. Now, as I indicated, uh, next, not this Sunday, but next weekend, I will be in the Ukraine with Bishop Michael Franklin. We are excited. I think everything is a part of God's plan. Uh, I'm telling you, and um, I'm, I'm giving specific instructions because more than anything, we will need a prayer support. The uh, artillery, the spiritual artillery in prayer as we now go forth into this, this spiritual warfare. Hallelujah. And I've, I'm going to give specific instructions to our prayer intercessors and our ministerial alliance and to the congregation. Because I want uh, individuals to be fasting every day that I'm away. I'll give more instructions on Sunday. And then there's going to be two prayer times every day. This will, be, this will be the only prayers going on for the week. And again, I'll share more on this coming Sunday. But at 6.15 in the morning and at 6.15 in the evening, every day that I'm away, a 15 minute time of prayer, hallelujah, through our telephone line, the call in line. We might even have a time where people can come to the sanctuary and pray. I'm feeling, I'm, I'm, I'm seeking the Lord and I'm gonna move as I feel led. This is a mission that we're on with Bishop Frank. I'm, I'm not fearful for my life. I just want us to complete the mission. We're going to go there to be with Pastor Alex. We've already had Zoom meetings with him. Uh, but I, I'm going to need your support. And in addition, I'm asking those who can to give a $25 offering in addition to your regular tithes and offering. And don't forget, many did not give last 
Sunday because we didn't have service here. But in addition, a $25 for Ukraine support. Everything you give, <clears throat> we'll be giving to Pastor Alex. There's so many things that they're in need of. And because the Russians uh, have specifically been targeting their infrastructure in the country, uh, oftentimes they're without uh, electricity uh, for a number of hours, cell service, running water. There are many things that are needed. We're going on a spiritual mission. We're going to be preaching, teaching, praying, laying on of hands. We're going to be uh, bringing <clears throat> an encouragement, a hope to the children, uh, dinners with orphans and uh, uh, widowers. Ooh, I'm We've got a full schedule from the time that we arrive until the time we depart. So we're going to need your support. So I'm asking, I'm look, I'm hoping we can get a hundred individuals to give at least $25. If you feel led to give more, please do so. I've even reached out to a few of my colleagues on the Executive Bishops Council uh, of the KW. Some have already responded but we want to go and be a blessing. So please keep that in mind. And again, I'll share more on this coming Sunday. So once again, thank you. I want to take this time to personally thank everyone. You who give every week through the offering at the church, many who give through Givelify, you're faithful, and even those on Cash App, we record every gift, monetary gift that is given, whether it's $5 or $500, I'm appreciative. And I do pray, I do pray that as we go into this new year, many who have not been giving as they should would take a new approach and pledge to God that as they're blessed, they will indeed bless the ministry. So again, I'm grateful for each of you. Thank you for joining me on this last Wednesday of Life Impact. And God willing, those who come, I'll see you Saturday for our prayer. Hallelujah praying out the old year, praying in the new year, and you who do not come there, we want to definitely see you on Sunday. On behalf of my wife, Lady Angela, our entire family, we love you and we need you. Continue. Let us fight the good fight of faith in Jesus' name. I, I'm telling you, I am so blessed and I want you to know that without you, supporting us, we cannot do it. I love every one of you. Let us look forward to what God is getting ready to do in 2023. Be blessed in Jesus' name.